are standing outside of Horizon Records here in downtown Greenville on the corner of Stone and Main. They first started out on Pleasantburg Drive and have been a mainstay here for about the last 17, 18 years. So they've definitely seen a lot of change in the area, but the one mainstay has been Horizon Records. With a variety of music and a unique experience in, inside, we'll go in and talk to Gene, but first we got to mask up and let's head on in. This is Donald Barber with the J. Michael Manley team at Keller Williams Greenville Upstate, and today we're in downtown Greenville on the corner of Main and Stone here at Horizon Records. And while downtown has changed quite a bit over the last 30 years or so, one thing that stayed constant is Horizon Records and Gene here. Gene Berger, the owner. Gene, thank you for having us out today. Thanks for coming by. Appreciate the interest. Gene, as I mentioned, you, you've been here a while. And, and so how long have you been here? I understand you just had a, a special anniversary here. And uh, also, how have you seen Greenville, the downtown area, change over all these years you've been here? Well, I've been here as a resident. My family moved here in uh, 1970, so I'm a 50-year veteran of Greenville, and almost all my years have been spent right in the in-town neighborhoods, the downtown area. Um, and we've been around, we, over Christmas holidays is sort of our anniversary season, and uh, this past December marked 45 years. Wow. We opened up over on uh, Pleasantburg Drive, South Pleasantburg, we were there for 20-some years, and then uh, seeking our own sort of special location and some autonomy and a little bit different vibe, we uh, acquired this corner and moved here and uh, moved here and opened our doors about the 1st of May in 03. Okay. So we're, uh, what is that, 17, 18 yeah. years that yeah. uh, we're clocking here at the new location. Yeah, I have yeah. to keep saying that, it's not new. But uh, it's, it's a, been a long and winding road. We've seen a lot of changes. Of course, in downtown, I'm old enough to remember all the old landmarks that only the old Green Billions remember. The, uh, the Bikers Cafe and the Fall Street Dive Cafe and, uh, you know, so many different things that have come and gone as things have developed and changed. We're here with, uh, we got CDs, we got plenty of albums all around us here, Gene. And, and so, being here as long as you've had and in, 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 in the industry, how have you seen it change from your eight tracks, cassettes, albums, all the way up to what's going out digitally nowadays and everything? Well, you pretty much said it. Um, when we opened our little tiny store in 1975, I think we had mostly uh, eight tracks and LPs and, and then we had cassettes. And then, of course, that uh, CD thing happened in the early 80s, and that was explosive for quite a while. And then, uh, you know, various things began to uh, interrupt the process, you know, downloading Napster. Uh, uh, LPs eventually came back. And now we're in this whole technology contrast world. We're thriving selling an antiquated, if you will, uh, throwback type format known as records vinyl and uh, the streaming you know format is just all over the world it's it's what the majority of people use I think however there's a huge percentage of people that want to own the object to listen to it to keep it to be able to pass it on and share it with friends family and they enjoy collecting and they enjoy the information and the color that is you know, uh, available to you when you've got the album or even the CD in your hand, you know, the booklet and everything. So a lot of people are out socially or talking with people, they'll say, well, how's things going with the digital? You know, I think they're thinking, yeah. you know, are you going out of business now? Yeah, yeah. And I will say, oh no, in the middle of pandemic, we're having one of the best years we've ever had. This uh, record thing has just been extraordinary. We keep thinking it's going to level off and it, it just keeps growing. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing, it's never going to take over the world to be a mass thing, but we're seeing a nice comeback amongst the hardcore collectors and the real music nerds with CDs. Yeah. We use CDs, we buy collections and we sell them. Things that are out of print that you can get for an inexpensive price and it's fun to flip through them and find them for cheap and mm -hmm. enjoy them, car and house. So, 
it's weird. It's like future streaming and digital and internet and record stores like ours all over the United States are really in a thriving mode, even with the craziness of the world. Now we've mentioned that the CDs and albums, yet you, uh, uh, the public can expect a lot more when they walk into Horizon Records here. So tell us a little bit more about that. Thanks. Um, we've got, first of all, we've got a really cool t-shirt line. For years and years and years, we were too disorganized or busy with just trying to pay the rent and sell some music. But over the last, I'd say decade, we have built up our Horizon t-shirt line. And uh, I think we have eight, ten varieties, t-shirts and two varieties of tote bags. They're all vintage, original art, uh, craziness. So uh, they sell like, like really well. They just need, we love them and we're probably going to bring out a new item to the line sometime this, uh, this spring and summer when I have a chance. We also um, have limited amount of things that relate to music but aren't the objects of play music themselves. Yeah. We have books about music. We have uh, music DVD somewhat, and we have stereo gear, and we've sold tons of that because everybody that hasn't kept a real stereo going all of a sudden wants a turntable and a receiver and a pair of speakers yeah. so they can uh, jump in and enjoy the, you know, the magic of playing a real two-channel stereo with a record and enjoying it that way. And we've sold a lot of turntables and have a great, and they're all vintage. Yeah. Uh, they're all classic uh, 60s, 70s, 80s uh, turntables that have been rehabbed, certified, and put back out for enjoyment okay. to purchase. Um, we also have the Bohemian next door, which is a wonderful uh, restaurant, cafe, pub. Uh, they do a huge brunch on Sundays. They have lunch every single day. They're open Tuesday through Sunday. The evening fair is really nice. There's always a chef special. Two, three of them are aboard. And, uh, they do a really nice job. The food is good and it's a friendly atmosphere. And they're right next door through our doors here. Mm -hmm. the pandemic has changed that a little bit, but once we get rid of that uh, situation, we, we share open air and it's just one okay. big place with two sections in it. Uh, right now we're two places right next to each other, but we, we still share customers like crazy. They have a patio over there. Yeah. Um, we also have done a lot of live music performance in the building. Historically, that's what a lot of people know us yeah. uh, from and have made their first visit here because of. We've done things in the cafe. We also have a space over here. We have two full PA setups. Uh -huh. And when things get safer, we will look forward to uh, putting out some uh, really nice uh, in-store performances and in-cafe performances. We've had some really big names in here. Some craziness has occurred <laughs> a number of times. Jason Isbell. Oh, uh, yeah. You all played in here. Wow. Amy Mann. Uh, I can't even remember all of them. Just a lot of really fun and really amazing music that's played here. Yeah. A lot of people waiting for that. But when it's time. So Gene, you touched on earlier uh, some, uh, you know, basically what's old has become new again with the albums, especially right. and listening to them on a on a record player stereo system. Uh, and so, what have you noticed the last one to two years? Some popular trends, either through uh, the types of music and how between families and some of the young adults. Uh, or even teenagers have come in here and what they're gravitating towards? Well, what I'm noticing is it's just sort of all over the map. You know, yeah. We're seeing people that are buying the latest thing that you would think of, um, a hip hop artists, a rock and roll, you know, kind of thing, whatever. And you're also seeing a lot of young people, I can't keep vintage copies of Nat King Cole and Frank Sinatra oh. style. It's oh, wow. Really, it's really <laughs> crazy. We sell a lot of Dolly Parton LPs. Yeah. And we sell blues. So it's, I think the internet, the one thing that has done for us is it allows people to break down barriers. They're not concerned with genres. Like, oh, I'm really a country customer. They're listening to, to you know, Jason Isbell and Sturgill Simpson, but they may also be buying Mastodon or Metallica mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, and the same with the other genres that we sell. I think the big takeaway is 
lots of vent stuff is finding an audience of young people and people of a certain recent couple of generations are particularly eclectic and not worrying about you know types of genres it's, it's a good thing i love it it kind of is a it's what we strive for here you know we're as interested in bluegrass as we are in mad lib the hip-hop producer you know uh, we, we like it all yeah within certain bands. Now, over the years, I'm sure, with your vast knowledge of music, you have quite a bit in, in a personal collection or things that mean that are very special to you. So what are a few things that, that you've acquired over the years that mean a lot to you? Well, yeah, when you run a record store and then have a long run for quite a while doing concerts, the opportunities for getting memorabilia get kind of crazy. But most of the things I have are, you know, modest things that just mean something to me. Um, behind you is a framed picture of a fellow named J.D. Crow, banjo player, and uh, the late, great uh, Keith Whitley on vocals. Uh, my wife took that. One of our first dates, we went up to Johnson City and took that picture of a little tiny place called Down Home Pick and Paws, kind of renowned in the folk and uh, songwriter and bluegrass world. And I treasure that. When J.D. came to the Peace Center, and we produced his concert, and he sat in with a concert of Tony Rice. Oh, wow. He produced. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got him to sign it, I mean, I mean, years later. And uh, I like that's, that means a lot to me. Yeah. And, uh, um, I've got a picture in the hallway, a framed poster that I got signed when the late, great uh, Charles Brown, the Blues Center, played the Peace Center. And that's really a lovely thing. I just think it's neat. He's such a cool spirit. You know, I really, really like what he did. And in the classical room where we were a minute ago, yeah. there's a poster by Yo-Yo Ma, of Yo-Yo Ma, that's signed by him to us, to Gene and Horizon, that a previous president of the symphony was kind enough to sneak under his nose at one point okay. when he was picking him up or dropping him off at the airport. Yeah. I treasure that. He's hanging on the wall. and It means a lot to me in my little classical collecting in our classical room. Um, at home, I have this funny thing. It's, it's probably not worth $5, but it means a lot. It's, um, it's a single candlestick candle holder with a partially burned candle in it that came off of Dr. John's piano when he had performed here in Greenville and we were involved in promoting the concert. And uh, the tour manager came to me after and said, hey, you take this, and it's got the gold glitter that customized the <laughs> candle, and the thing is all painted kind of like a New Orleans-style festive colors. It's just a little trinket, but it sits on the mound of the house. I just like it. Gives a good vibe. Uh, there's, 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 there's just tons and tons of stuff. There's a sign over here that says Horizon Records, Tape and Accessories. What to say, used albums, traded and sold, uh, Barbara. My wife painted that and we hung it in one of the original store locations out up under the eaves like a shingle. Yeah. And it's moved along from several locations and still presides right there. I like that's just it's just the silly thing that I like in there. Uh, if the public wants to find out more about Horizon Records, where can they go online or through social media to learn a little bit more about you? It's pretty simple. It's horizonrecords.net is our main website. There's also a web store there. You can find the tab right there. It says shop online. We're also on Facebook, uh, pretty obvious, Horizon Records, Instagram, same, and we're on Twitter. Lastly, Gene, is there anything that we haven't touched on today that you would like the public to be more aware of with Horizon Records? Thanks, Donald. Thanks for asking. Um, yeah, I'd like to say that we're proud to be an independent retailer in the modern world. Uh, retail itself, and indie retail particularly, is a fast disappearing genre of neighborhoods, businesses, and independent operators. And we think it's an important part of any community. And we also are really, really believe in the uh, and ardently uh, like to hope we do a good job with, you know, creating a unique experience when a person comes into a business, you know. Uh, what do I, why would I go here instead of just clicking something on my laptop? Uh, and we try and bring that, all the historic images. And, like there's a Leonard Skinner album cover over there with the flame cover. 
and framed in it is a ticket from that concert, one that was released, and they played the Greenville Memorial Auditorium and the plane crash, and a good bit of the band died and perished, and there's a historic ticket in that album cover framed over there. And wow. Tons more stuff like that all through here. And we also believe in, you know, all the different genres of music, which a lot of the record stores, there's a rock and roll havens, and I love that. There's nothing wrong with that. But we're just excited about, you know, the classical and the jazz. We have a heavy metal department right here, which keeps expanding. Uh, bluegrass, you know. We're, we're, we don't have a problem with top 40, but we feel like that can be gotten anywhere. We, we try and cover it. We're most interested in you know, a unique and uh, enjoyable experience and an uh, open-minded attitude toward what we offer and curating some unusual things. That's part of what we think is important. People can get the common stuff anywhere. What we think we bring to the table is a unique selection and some really deep and well-curated stacks of so many things to, uh, to paw through and to randomly discover. <laughs> Gene, we thank you so much for having us out today, telling us a lot more about Horizon Records. And so, you know his website, you know all of his social media links, and you know that he's in a great location in downtown Greenville. So you've got a wide variety of music, you've got stereo equipment, books, DVDs, visit the cafe next door. There's a lot you can do here and have a unique experience. Thank you again, Gene, we appreciate it. And so until next time, we'll see you then.